Lieutenant General Tukut Buratai says collaborative efforts of all security agencies in Bochi State is responsible for the great improvement of security situation in that area. The Army boss said this during operational visit to Army formations in the state. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa reports that the Army leadership was also in Damaturu, Ilbe State. Lieutenant General Tukut Buratai is in 33 Artillery Brigade and the Armour Corps Bochi to flag off the construction of this barrack access road and inaugurate completed projects. The army boss who noted with dismay deficit in accommodation for army personnel appraised the ongoing construction of houses for soldiers at the Armour Corps barrack where he promised to expand the project. He also inspected the completed command guest house along the school of Armour Bochi. Lieutenant General Buratai commended the people of the state so that, uh, we'll for cooperating with security agencies. Uh, on very cordial relationship between the uh, members of uh, the public and the Nigerian army here in Bauchi. And the security situation in Bauchi has greatly improved. From Bauchi, the chief of army staff proceeded to Damaturu, Yobe State, where he inspected the ongoing construction of a level 2 military hospital before receiving a donation of 20 operational vehicles from Damaturu, Yobe State, Ismail Musa, NTN News. As we take our first break, what is the stance of the federal government on the pump price of petrol? Join us after these messages for answers. Oh, Chief Mike, how are you? Fine. I'm going to Sun Office for the certification of my wheat flour. Oh no, things have changed. Sun yeah, has simplified on. all its activities. You could have even stayed back in Kano and process all your papers online. Whoa. With the efforts of Sun, the products of SMEs can now compete globally. Sun has put in place necessary machineries in support of the growth of SMEs. At highly subsidized charges, SMEs can now get their certification, laboratory testing of their products, as well as purchase of standards. Meanwhile, Sun is carrying out massive seizure of substandard goods in the market and have gotten legal backing to prosecute offenders, all to protect consumers and SMEs. S -O -N -O -C. Sun, improving life through standards. Kinde suffers from indigestion. His twin Taiyi suffers from heartburn. Sometimes it's the other way around, or both. That's why they use Gaviscon Double Action. It soothes within three minutes and lasts for up to four hours. For double relief from heartburn and indigestion, Gaviscon Double Action. Cold and flu can spread through the contact of hands. <laughs> And in such situations, I can't risk falling ill. So I recommend Dettol, as it protects from up to 100 illness-causing germs. That's why I want to be Dettol sure. Dettol, be 100 Do you know that the Nigerian police now operates in the best international practices of policing? Do you know that the Nigerian police has been restructured to be more accountable and responsive to all your security challenges? Now, what the police demand from you is your trust, your collaborative efforts by providing necessary information about criminals and their activities in your neighborhood. Be vigilant to achieve our creed as we promise. We shall police the country based on international core values of policing with integrity. We shall ensure that rule of law prevails in our actions and activities. We shall respect diversity, display courage, show compassion, and demonstrate professionalism. We shall operate within the principle of democratic policing. We shall shun corruption and we shall make Nigeria safer and secured under the leadership of IGP Ibrahim Otum Idris. Let the wind of change blowing across the country chase away crime for the benefit of our society. Yes, the Nigerian police says this change must come with peace and tranquility. This message was brought to you by the Public Relations Department of the Nigerian Police Force. Your kitchen gets 10 out of 10. Thank you. This also gets a 10. Should we see the toilet now? Sure. This gets just one. It is clean. But not perfect 10. Better than my detergent and bleach? Impossible. Challenge? Try the new Apic 10X. Compared to bleach and detergent. Apic sticker formulation removes yellow stains times better. Giving you a sparkling clean toilet. Wow. Now you also take that? Apic 10X challenge. Also available in 200 ml pack. Oh, hello. You 
look awesome. Thank you. Tell me, what have you been up to? My dear. I walked down the road. Ah. Yeah. Mm. Tell me about you city? now. See, I'm, I'm doing so well. Now. Seriously? Not so much Tell me. Yeah. Just let me in now. I'll tell you. Okay. Excuse me, what was that now? There is so much money. So much what? Why did it become... Oh my God, I don't even want to mention it. Tell you shouting. Why won't I shout? It's nothing bad. Did nothing you say it's nothing yes. bad? Mr. Luca just found out that his son James was drowned at sea. And Mama Osara too. Ha, oh God, that poor woman. She was told that her daughter Nene was found on the streets of Italy engaged in prostitution. But my security just learned that. Down, no, no, just down, don't tell me down. that. It's I'm really disappointed. That. It's not what oh you think at all. What you have to go, but I have to go. No, no, come no, back. Come Give us a now. Come, let me tell I, I, you. No, no, no. Don't be deceived. You could be the next victim of human trafficking or slavery. Don't fall for it. This is a public service announcement brought to you by NTA. Death Toll Team is visiting schools to teach children how to protect themselves from diseases. Do you know how we get illnesses like diarrhea, cough and cold? No! They are spread through germs which are everywhere. You collect germs that cause diseases. You pick up germs from any surface like when you don't wash your hands after going to the toilet while playing. And then you can get sick because of germs. That's why you need to fight germs to stay healthy by washing your hands and taking your bath with Dettol soap to protect from up to 100 illness causing germs. Wash, wash, wash your hands. What you have to do is bath, bath, bath yourself. Dettol soap every day. Wash, wash, wash your hands. Thanks for staying with us. You're watching NTA Network News. We will now rejoin our Port Harcourt Network studio where Diaba Barry will now tell us about the security situation in that state. It's over to you, Diaba Barry. Good evening, children, and welcome to Port Harcourt. The Minister of Interior, General Roman Danbazel, was today in River State for fact-finding mission and assessment of the general security situation in connection with the Omoku and Igbeda killings as part of measures to forestall further violence against innocent citizens. The Minister General Danbazel disclosed this as he visited Governor Yesomwike at Government House Port Harcourt. Ogemiye okay, completes the report. The Minister of Interior Abdurrahman Dambazao is in River State in connection with the spate of killings that took place recently in the state. He is to carry out a general assessment of the state security network. The visit is also geared towards seeking partnership with the River State government to close all perceived security gaps for adequate security of lives and property. River State is very, very important in this country, particularly when it comes to the issue of economy. And uh, no, no reasonable investment will be realized and the investors will be scared. Governor Wike noted that the issue of cultism has always existed, adding that Omoko and Ebeda have always been flashpoints. Hence, the security agents should have been more cautious of those areas. We require a special team to tackle this issue of cultism and kidnapping. I wrote to the IG that he had been sending special teams and special squad to other states. Why is it that all my writings have not been heeded to all? The Minister of Interior had meetings with security agencies in River State and also visited the crime scene before leaving the state. In Port Harcourt, Oge Dinyegui, NTA News. The latest death of six promising young men at Ebeda in the Moha local government area of River State, said to be cult related, is yet another unfortunate incident of wanton killing in River State. Robinson Diretaide will visit the community reports that two of the deceased were children of the same parents. It was just like a normal day on Thursday, the 4th of January 2018, as most residents of Egbeda community went to the farm and others busy with their daily duties before the sound of gunshots put them on the run. On realizing what was happening, five of their young promising men were already dead, while the deceased died on his way to the hospital. 
The motive of the killings may not be unconnected with court-related rivalry, as some of the community youths are suspected acting members of Iceland and Degbam court groups, allegedly disturbing the community in the past. I was here in my veranda here. What I had uh, outside. Before I know it, three men were lying there. Ebeku quarters lost their only lawyer, Pasi Lokene, who was in the village to celebrate the new year. The mother of the deceased, who spoke in Ikwere language, could not hide her sorrowful feelings. From Egbeda in River State, Robinson Derateide, NTA News. And that does it from Portaco. It is back to Shewu for the rest of the news. Good evening. Thank you, dear Babari. And to other reports now, transportation of goods and services between Abuja and Kaduna has received a boost with the delivery of new coaches by the federal government. Oyinaya Kaluoka in this special report takes a look at the impact of this development. Three coaches with capacity for 88 passengers for economy and 56 for the business class have been running the Abuja Kaduna train service since it was inaugurated in 2016. With daily increase on numbers of passengers, getting a ticket has been a Herculean tax. But with the new coaches and the direct trip, the pressure will be eliminated. With the 10 new coaches and two locomotives, the number of passengers have increased from 320 to 640. And for those who are living in Kaduna, you can now afford to come to work from Kaduna to Abuja with a speed train and as well go back to your home in Kaduna. Same thing. I think that's a fantastic idea. That is wonderful. That would be a wonderful idea because this is the most convenient way to travel. We're very, very happy with this new development. It will make our journey easier. The locomotive that will be pulling this is designed for 150 kilometers per hour. So let's assume average of 130, we will get time. There will be room for any passenger who wishes to travel to Abuja from here and vice versa. In the, in the next few weeks, if not for the budget constraints, we would have done that. The procurement process has been completed for the e-ticketing. Federal government is working towards connecting the country through rail. Uhinaya Kalo Oka, NTA News. Now, the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Dr. Emmanuel Ibe Kachiku, has refuted reports trending in some dailies and the social media that he dropped a hint of an impending fuel price increase during the joint public hearing by the Senate and the House of Representatives Committees on Downstream in Abuja. The Minister told journalists that he needs to reiterate federal government's resolve to maintain petrol pump price at 145 naira per litre to set the record straight. Lydia Samson has the report. It is important to note that the presidency has set up a special committee to identify the immediate and remote causes of the fuel scarcity with a view to finding immediate and long-lasting solutions to the challenge. The committee has been in rounds of deliberations in the past few days and discussions are still ongoing. Um, some statement created to me that we said the price might be increasing to 118 area. No such statement was made. Uh, no such plan is intended and I needed to clarify this because sometimes uh, some of these um, rumor mongering all adds to the difficulties that NPC has in terms of being able to contain pr uh, price speculation. Uh, the president's mandate on this issue is very, very specific. We are not increasing price from 145 naira. He urged the general public and stakeholders in the oil and gas sector to disregard any report of price increase. Meanwhile, foot soldiers in the war against sabotage and diversion are resolved to read filling stations of sharp practices and maintain seamless product supply at government-approved price. With the quantum of um, uh, product that NMPC is pushing into the market, we will soon be saturated with the uh, uh, product in all our filling stations. A visit to a cross section of filling stations on the outskirts of the Federal Capital Territory shows seamless process as stations dispense their commodity with extra tanks on standby. Distance here now, one will stay up to 20 30 minutes before getting fuel. Whereas I land in the city there, in fact, one will just drive in and drive out. I think there, there's a little queue in Maraba area. The, the tension has, has cooled down a little bit, and uh, we are selling normal fuel now. So. Uh, we don't have problem of uh, scarcity again. The commended government's effort at convening a public stakeholders hearing and called for a permanent solution. 
in Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. Still on fuel price, the Department of Petroleum Resources, DPR, in Sokoto State has continued to clamp down on petroleum marketers selling the product above the official pump price. The DPR has forged many defaulting petrol stations to sell the commodity to motorists at the official price. Dalhato Abdullahi reports. In Sokoto, long queues are still visible at most of the petrol filling stations selling the commodity. Some filling stations are still selling a litre of fuel between 225 naira and 230 naira against the official pump price. These sharp practices continue to cause untold hardship to motorists who spend hours before getting the commodity. Some say they spend the night in the queues just to get fuel at the filling station selling at the control price. The DPR officials went around Sokoto Metropolis to check holding and selling of fuel above the official pump price. Head of Operations DPR Sokoto Office, Nuruddin Abdullahi Kamba, insisted that all the filling stations must sell a litre of fuel at 145 naira, saying defaulters will be sanctioned. So we will make sure that after we monitor the sales to the end of the stock, we will sell the station until when they fail penalty of overpricing. Some motorists who spoke to NTA News commended DPR for its efforts toward stopping filling stations from holding and selling fuel above the official pump price. In Sakoto, Alhato Abdullahi, NTA News. And we have more on the fuel situation as we join Jennifer in our legal studio. Hello Jennifer, it's over to you. Thank you, Shim. Good evening and a warm welcome to Lagos. Now, purchasing of petrol in Lagos has become easy as the perceived scarcity of the product which led to long queues of vehicles at petrol stations in the metropolis have become a thing of the past. Emil Dory made some stops at petrol stations and have this report. This is the situation in most filling stations in Lagos orderliness and quick dispensing of petrol to buyers. Motorists expressed delight that they can now drive into petrol stations without hassles to purchase the product. You can see now it's getting better gradually. Foil is okay now, no problem, no queue for foil now. We thank God, Alhamdulillah. They are selling. It's improving. Better. Now it's easy to get into a filling station and be attended to. Better queue on. Well day. The filling station sometimes you go see that one is closed, that one is open. But as you can see now, for a day everywhere. In some of the service stations visited, petrol was sold at the approved pump price of 145 naira per litre. To business, Nigeria attains world's second largest producer of sorghum as the debut sovereign green bond records oversubscription. Just as stockbrokers express optimism and on the capital market at retaining a bullish outlook in 2018. Let's now join Abola de Salami for details. Glad to have you join us on the business news segment. Nigeria now sits on the world's second largest producer of sorghum with an annual output of 6.94 million tons. This shows federal government's commitment at boosting self-sufficiency for key commodities and diversify export base. Zamfara, Niger, Plateau and Katsina states stand out as major producing states. The Debt Management Office Thursday announced that the debut sovereign green bond offered to the general public in December of 2017 was oversubscribed. DMO says at the close of the offer, a total subscription received was $10.79 billion compared to the $10.69 billion offered. The $10.69 billion sovereign green bond issued for a tenure of five years and a coupon of 13.48% was subscribed by the bank's pension funds, asset management, and retail investors. The Nigerian capital market during 2017 trading operated on both bearish and bullish outlook. To close the year 
on a 42% gain in the oil share index. The gain, according to experts, was achieved in line with the development in the global oil market. The nation's exit from recession, improvement in liquidity at the foreign exchange market, and government fiscal and monetary policies. This year, 2018, we expect that the rally that we saw in 2017, it was a recovery of 42%. I call it a recovery, you know, because if you look at where we were in 2008, we, we haven't got into those levels. But with the present pace, you know, that we expect the economy to be recovering, you know, and the market to be recovering in the same same um, level, so we expect the same performance you know, to be replicated in 2018. When I leave you graphic details of how stocks were traded on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange today. Stock market report concludes business news segment. The news continues shortly. Please stay with us. It's alarming. This is still NTN Network News. We'll now pause for a commercial break. The news will continue shortly with Shin in Abuja. Please stay tuned. Share smiles, give happiness, and make moments. What a beautiful world we will build. Join us. Mom says we have more than enough. Wherever you may travel, whoever you will be with, we wish you a supreme Christmas. Be supreme, Nigeria. Thank you so much for inspiring greatness in me, Alaji. Alaji? <laughs> I am just rehearsing, dear. Rehearsing for what? A life changing and inspiring meeting. With who? Alahaji Aliko Dangote. <laughs> With the FG and I app and just 500 Naira, you stand a chance to meet one on one with Alhaji Aliko Dangote, Africa's richest man, and win cash prizes. As the Be Inspired meetings give Nigerians a chance to meet one on one with icons. To qualify for the draw, Download FGNI app from Apple Store or Google Play Store. Go to the Be Inspired section and follow the instructions. Cost of travel and accommodation of all winners within Nigeria will be borne by the organizers. Terms and conditions apply. Proudly supported by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. We appreciate your staying with us on the network news. In the agri sector, in line with the federal government's policy on food security, for Dama 3 additional financing project in Taraba State has trained women from the rural areas on new methods of dry season rice farming and processing using the false bottom technique. Joseph Zanna Gambo reports that the one-day training program has exposed the participants to new methods of rice production for more profit. The new method of rice processing 
using false bottom system has been introduced to rice farmers in Tarabo State by Fadama 3 additional financing project in order to improve their skills in dry season rice farming and processing for improved quality. The new method, which was demonstrated at the end of the training workshop, has been identified as easier and more qualitative compared to the existing method in the state. Tarabo State Commissioner of Agriculture, Dr. David Ishaya Kasa, who declared the workshop open, commended for the three project for the training workshop, stressing that the knowledge acquired will go a long way in improving rice production to complement government's efforts on improved rice farming. It is a deliberate effort by making a little push in fabricating shop machine for producing vital feeds by looking at the advantages of converting the farm residues as a healthy and assured means of domesticating livestock. The Tarabo State Coordinator for the Matri Additional Financing Project, Mrs. Regina Festo, said the program is aimed at exposing women who are engaged in rice business to the new technique of dry season rice farming and processing. We wish in the future to have a packaged rice from these women. The beneficiaries appreciated government and for the Matri Additional Financing Project for organizing the workshop, adding that it will assist in improving their production in Jalingo. Joseph Zanagambo, NTA News. And it's time now to join our Kaduna Network Centre where Abdullahi is waiting with more reports. Hello, Ab Abdullahi, it's over to you. Compliment of the season show. Any story on Kaduna City will be incomplete without relating to a majestic edifice strategically located around its northern axis, popularly known as Hassan Katsana House. It is famous for hosting regional, national and even international conferences among other events. Muhammad Umar Ajingi tells us more on what people don't know on the complex that still enjoy patronage from within and outside the state. Kaduna was home to colonial masters prior to independence of Nigeria in 1960. A city with wonderful master plan, conducive weather, a cosmopolitan town accommodating people from all parts of the country. Apart from these features, the city was once the capital of northern region. This made it a place with infrastructure. This magnificent building along Agilu Road, known as State House Kau, is one of such legacies significant in the annals of history. And uh, the the whole uh, three blocks was built by uh, Del the, uh, the Bato, 200,000 pounds then. The house, named after General Hassan Usman Kesana, has a beautiful banquet hall, conference room, residence of traditional rulers and offices for annual political meetings. The Vice President stays there at the same time visiting heads of state. It was a very beautiful building good architectural design. I remember very well Haile Selassie when he came here during the first dark and other occasions stayed there. The British royal family members stayed in these places and the many heads of African heads of state stayed in that places because it was a fantastic building. Being a house where important events like Northern Governors Forum, Northern Traditional Rulers Annual Meeting are held, General Hassan Usman Katana House has remained an important place that history cannot afford to forget in the political evolution of the North and by extension the entire country. In Kaduna, I am Muhammad Umar Ajingi, NTN News. Thank you, Ajingi. And that reports and network news from Kaduna. It's back to show for more reports. Show. Thank you very much, Abdullah. Here we start now with the education sector. Despite major strides recorded in the education sector in 2017, observers say there is the need for government at all levels, the private sector, and foreign donors to urgently rise to fix the sector for optimal performance. Education correspondent Rashida Mustafa Olagunju reports that this is the view of key players while reviewing the sector's performance in the past year. 
policies inconsistency, inadequate facilities, insistent industrial action resulting for poor funding and remuneration of workers' salary, inadequate current capacity, large number of out of school children, absence of cutting edge research are some of the problems that have for years been associated with the nation's education system. But in 2017, various measures were put in place by government and major players to reduce them to the barest minimum, if not totally eliminate them. There are some highs and there are some lows. The budget still fell far short of UNESCO prescription. And the high aspect last year's um, performance. You know, so registering more private investors means that government is, is coming to the realization of the fact that we need them. We need the private hands. Starting with the universal basic education, the commission says it has put measures in place to ensure that students of that category get the required quality of education in a very conducive environment. But observers were quick to decry the refusal of some states to provide the required matching grants needed to access fund leading to billions of naira for intervention line fallow. We embarked on three major activities. The provision of instructional materials to provide for construction or provision of infrastructure in rural areas where uh, peoples still learn under the trees. Similarly, the National Universities Commission says it has licensed more universities to boost current capacity. Every May and every November, we send uh, teams, various teams of professors to various universities for accreditation purposes. And we do close down a number of programs where they fail to meet the requirement. Also worthy of mention is the step taken by the Cardinal State Government during the year to ensure that students of basic education are well taught by qualified teachers through the striking of unqualified teachers and replacing them by qualified ones. Another step to revamp the sector is the emergency retreat by the Federal Executive Council on Education where key players met to chart the way forward. Our intention is we will try to catch the glory of uh, yesterday's. Let me tell you right now as we speak, I have the best minds in education working. On the whole, stakeholder noted the need for improved funding as well as proper implementation and monitoring of projects in the sector. Rashidat Mustafa Olagunju, NCA News. Nigerians residing in Libya have voiced out their concerns over how they are being treated. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jeffrey Onyama, assured them that the government is addressing their plight, especially stranded Nigerian migrants at detention centres in Libya. Gadba Mohamed Natala reports. It was a displeasing moment for the Minister of Foreign Affairs and his entourage when he met with Nigerian community residing legally in Libya as they express the kind of humiliation they go through in the Libyan capital, Tripoli. As Nigerians, sometimes we are ashamed to use the name Nigerians. Jeffrey Onyama says his visit to the country is to work out evacuation plan with the Libyan authorities to return Nigerian migrants still at detention centers. The Libyan government got up and they said, look, listen, these are criminals. These do not represent Libya. These do not represent the Libyan government. These are not our values. And when I met the president today, we said the same thing. We said, yes, we share the same values. So we expect to see um, the real practice, not just the words. However, he pointed out that all their grievances should be channeled to the charge of the affairs of the Nigerian embassy to take necessary action. Senior Special Assistant to the President on Diaspora and Foreign Affairs, Abike Dabri extolled President Buhari's steps to end trafficking, especially young people crossing over to North Africa and Europe. Major concern is the issue of passport that the Controller General of Immigration, Mohamed Babandidi, resolved to address immediately by renewing or issuing new ones to those who lost theirs. Okay, if you can pay online, pay. Bring receipt for us, we'll issue you a passport. 
Nigerians based in Libya are hopeful that their plight in this new year will be for the better. From the Libyan capital Tripoli, I am Garobo Mohamed Natala, NTA News. Latest happenings on the international scene and the sporting world form part of our next set of reports after this timeout. Please stay with us. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC, is working to ensure access to safe, good quality essential medicines with the World Health Organization pre-qualification of Made in Nigeria pharmaceutical products, stiffer penalties for fake drug offenders with a review of NAVDAC laws. National, regional, and international collaborations, cutting-edge technologies, including the mobile authentication service. For the last 24 years, NAVDAC has made steady progress in ensuring that the health of the nation is protected. Our collective responsibility is eliminating substandard, falsified and unsafe drugs, medical devices, foods and water. I urge all Nigerians to support NAVDAC in safeguarding our health. God bless Nigeria. Let us support NAVDAC to win the war against fake drugs and other unwholesome regulated products. NAVDAC, safeguarding the health of the nation. The time has come for Nigeria to take her rightful place in world sports with the first national grassroots sports festival to discover and prepare sport talent and develop future world champions for Nigeria. The festival date is 3rd to 10th March 2018. The venue is the National Stadium Abuja, packages A and B. This is the opportunity for you to promote your brand through the festival. For broadcast sponsorship, which include live broadcasts, highlight shows, and TV fans show, contact the Chairman, Chief Coordinator, Angelo Peter I. Elosia, or Nick Oyushi, organizers, Grassroots International Sports Academy, and LOP Worldwide Television, endorsed by the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports Development. Broadcast partner, NTA. <laughs> On the foreign scene, Liberia's president-elect George Ware has been issued a certificate of return. Details of this and more on News Across the Globe with Obiagili Ugoke. It's good to have you join us on the segment of the news. Liberia's National Election Commission, NEC, has presented certificates of return to the president-elect George Ware, Vice President-elect Joel Harold Taylor and the newly elected members of the House of Representatives. Chairman of NEC, Mr. Jerome Kokoya, performed the ceremony at the Commission's headquarters in Moronvia. The new leaders will be sworn in on January 22nd, which is the third working Monday of January, as stipulated in the Liberian Constitution. In the meantime, Sudan has recalled his ambassador from neighboring Egypt for consultations. Egypt's foreign ministry said it is evaluating the situation in order to take appropriate action. Relations between both countries have been soured by disputes over the ownership of Halayak Triangle border area and over the use of the water from the River Nile that passes through their territories. Moving on now, Russian Foreign Ministry has said his country welcomes North and South Korea's readiness to resume dialogue. Moscow hopes this positive trend will be sealed by concrete agreements aiming at settlement in the Korean Peninsula. North Korea agreed on Friday to hold official talks with the South next week, the first in years. That does it on the segment. Thanks for being there. I'm Obiageli Ugoke. And in sports, three-time CAF Women Football Player of the Year, Asisat Oshala tasks young talents on resilience as Serena Williams withdraws from the Australian Open. Ayodiji Makinde is our guide on sports update. 2017 ITO CAF Women's Player of the Year, Asisat Oshuala, has charged young African women footballers to keep working hard and never give up on their aspirations. After being awarded as Africa's best for the third time in four years in Accra, Ghana on Thursday. When I left my team in Arsenal and I moved to China, a lot of people said, Azizat, your career is going to be gone. I want to use this opportunity to encourage all the young girls out there. Don't let anyone talk you down. 
Don't listen to people. Follow your heart. Meanwhile, Mohamed Salah of Egypt joined the exclusive list of Africa's best after polling 625 points to win the men's category ahead of Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang and Sadio Mane. Certified gymnastics coach Anthony Asukwo is targeting to train about 3,000 potential gymnasts in 2018 in the bid to fortify the sports in the country. Asukwo, who spoke to NTA Sports in Abuja, believes that early preparation will yield medals for Nigerian gymnasts at major competitions in 2018. We are going to be you know, stretching it out now to aerobic gymnastics and um, artistic gymnastics. Aerobic gymnastics can be done in the university games and um, also the military.